Hi, this is Bruce Rawls. I'm speaking again with Susan Dugan. And today we're recording this actually on March 26th, uh, 2021, which is uh, the week before the uh, Easter holidays and those, those, uh, those typical, typical time of year when, when people consider those kinds of stories. And we thought we'd, um, at Susan's excellent suggestion, read in chapter 20, uh, the very first section, uh, the vision of holiness, the, uh, the section called, entitled Holy Week. So uh, thank you, Susan, for again, for having another conversation and for suggesting this topic. I think it's a really great one. And it, and it addresses the, uh, the course's ideas of crucifixion and resurrection and victimhood and so much more. So anyway, thanks. Perfect. Definitely. Yeah, and this um, beginning of chapter 20, um, Holy Week is what we're going to be looking at is um, is really um, it's kind of uh, uh, kind of skewed toward Palm Sunday <laughs> and and you know that whole so the whole which launches Holy Week and um, and in this section it talks about it, it beginning with um, with um, thorns or with palms and ending with lilies mm -hmm. and it's and it's that idea of the lilies being the um, the symbol of innocence that the course uses the the universal innocence of God's son and um and you know I I've been I'll, I'll be teaching next week in my Tuesday night class the gift of lilies which is the next um section which is really about Easter and about looking at the crucifixion the idea of crucifixion differently and you know the the world story of crucifixion um, is based in the ego's thought system of one or the other. It's a reflection <laughs> of, of that. And really is, is this out, out picturing of the inner condition of, of believing in the belief in sin, the sin of separation from God in the mind and the need to hold somebody accountable for that, the, you know, the, the need for punishment. And so, um, you know, it's a story of, um, of man, <laughs> right? Mankind, humankind, being, um, you know, um, being actually culpable <laughs> of, of that, that separation, being real as bodies, as personal selves, as to having pushed God's love away and, um, and trying to um, always kind of hoist that guilt on someone else to try to make us feel better, relatively better um, about, about ourselves, less guilty. Um, and yet, and yet um, it's it, it, it all the biblical story of crucifixion of Jesus really does is is um, sort of cement our belief <laughs> in sin and um, and and you know our, our um, it's, it's a story of of Jesus being um, victimized crucified right but the reason that we're, we're given in the biblically is is really as a sacrifice um, you know, that God gave his only son or his, his chosen son as, as um, you know, to die on the cross so that, so that we could be redeemed from our real sin of separation. And so, of course, we have very conflicted ideas about, about Jesus as a result. Um, you know, Jesus being is the most chosen one and, and yet um, look what happened to him <laughs> and, and he's doing it for me. So, you know, all it does is really just feed that whole idea of, of um, victims and victimizers and, and of that being justified, of punishment justified and um, of, of redemption needed for, for a real crime of, of, you know, for real guilt. And the course of course takes a, a very different viewpoint that the separation never happened. And as a result, all of the outside pictures, you know, all of the projections of separation never happened either. Um, certainly within the world, there, there seems to be um, a never ending, um, you know, series of things happening that, that seem to enforce the idea of one or the other and victims and victimizers and punishment deserved. And, um, but, but, you know, that's, that's within the dream. <laughs> um, the entire dream is, is a, is a dream, is an illusion and is not real and is just a mistaken, um, you know, um, projection of the belief in the mind of separation. So, so that's the course's, you know, basic underlying metaphysics about this. But what I was thinking about with this section really was, was that idea of, of needing to have victims and victimizers and one or the other in our personal lives, in our collective lives, and how we refuse 
as um, when we're identified with the ego, when we've chosen the ego as our inner teacher to, um, to question, question that belief. And, and we refuse to see that, that victims and victimizers are the same in the, in, in the sense that they're, they're all acting out from the same mistaken belief and the same fear and pain that that belief um, you know, wreaks havoc with in the mind. So, so we're all fighting the same hard battle of trying to prove that we exist, but it's not our fault. And it seems to be um, a losing battle for all of us. And, and so even though you know, we, fe we feel like we're horrified when, when horrible things happen in the world, um, it, on some level, it, it gives us the opportunity to identify usually when we've chosen the ego with the victims over the, because we feel victimized constantly rather than the victimizer and not see the ways in which um, the whole thought system is, is, is really coming from that same mistaken belief and, and, and not able to acknowledge the ways in which I also victimize out of a belief of being first victim, victimized. Um, and so, you know, it just, it's kind of a never ending attack and defense cycle that goes on. Yeah. And, but there's a way out of it. And the way out of it is, is, to, is to choose this part of our mind that, um, that doesn't believe in separation, that knows that sin is not real and um, is always, you know, really has already resurrected, <laughs> never, never went down the rabbit hole in the first place, has already resurrected to the, the truth in the mind um, that, that we're all the same and we're all equally loved by God and we're all, like, we're all going home. Um, even if we're not there now and we, and we can't accept it right now, inevitably that's where we are. And not one note in heaven's song was really missed here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well stated. <laughs> you covered a lot there as you, as you often do. <laughs> so yeah, a very, very lucid, clear explanation of so much of the course's metaphysics. Hey, you use the word that I don't often hear in, in course meetings and classes is mankind. And I was thinking, well, and in the hands of the ego, it's, it's human unkind, you know, it, it really is because um, right. our egos it really know nothing but cruelty being, you know, birthed metaphorically from an, a cruel idea of right. that we believe that we threw God into the bus, we, you know, shattered perfect oneness, we, you know, trashed our creator, however you want to describe that, we, we think that we made up a duality and it, and it took. And, and because of that, we're always in a, uh, you know, looking over our shoulder, you know, uh, for the next adversary uh, and, and, you know, always waiting for the other shoe to drop and, you know, all those other metaphors, but it's, it, it's always an uneasy uh, ceasefire. There's never any real peace in that thought system because it's, it's all about victims and victimizers and, and who crucified me and who do I get to crucify next as, as retaliation. And because that, even though it's, we don't usually think of those blatant of terms, it's, that's, that's the ego's modus operandi, isn't it? Right. And I mean, the idea of crucifixion, I mean, that's a very extreme example, mm -hmm. but, but, you know, maybe not so extreme. We've just witnessed, um, you know, two horrific mass shootings in, in a couple of weeks here um, on top of each other. And, um, and you know, um, we're always in some way crucifying ourselves with this belief, by this belief. And, and, you know, we've in, in our own, in our insanity um, and confusion, we, we, you know, we don't really see that, that, well, we've completely repressed that we're doing this, that we're choosing this on, at the level of the mind. And, and, you know, we're not aware that there's another part of our mind usually that, um, that, that disagrees with us mm -hmm. and is sane and is calm and is, is safe and is, um, you know, eternally innocent. And so, um, you know, it's so important to begin to recognize the ways in which I crucify myself, I crucify others, um, you know, crucify, I mean, it's a symbol of attack and it's a symbol of hate and, um, and guilt and suffering. And, you know, um, we're always trying to dissociate ourselves from that and blame it, you know, see it in others and not in ourselves. Mm -hmm. But I think in retracing our steps back to the mind, which the course is helping us do with, you know, the Jesus as the light that helps us dispel the darkness, right? And leads us, leads us back up the path that separation, the ladder that separation seemed to lead us down. 
um, you know, part of that journey is really beginning to take back our projections and really, really recognize my own call for love in all of my, my attack thoughts. Um, and, you know, that can mean my attack thoughts that come up around what I see on the news. And, you know, again, wanting to, you know, how I, I believe that the, the victim, the victimizer is um, beyond redemption or the thoughts that come up about that. Um, you know, my thoughts of anger and, and attack and, um, and the, you know, just recognizing how, how much I don't want to include everyone in the pain of this thought system and to really see that the suffering on all sides of this, there's no way out of it, um, that the suffering is the same. And, and beyond that, underneath all of that is this, there is this, you know, lost, frightened, one child of God that has, has is very, very confused and believes that um, his attack on God was real and that he is um, condemned for all eternity, lost in a, in a world in which, you know, um, he's trying to somehow find shreds of love and, and can't really find any um, and doesn't ever feel really deserving anyway and is trying to find it from others that <laughs> feel just as lost as, as, as we do. So, you know, all of that sort of has to be, um, it, it, it's not like we have to deliberately analyze that and, and try to intellectualize that or anything. It's just that through this process of beginning to question that the course calls forgiveness of beginning to question my attack thoughts of beginning to take responsibility back to my mind um, for my unkind thoughts and my, my thoughts of hatred, my thoughts of, of um, anger and, and all of the things that come up for us as, as you know, within the human condition of separation, of, you know, believing that separation is realized, that process of questioning that and really raising it to the light of this other part of my mind is the day in and day out practice um, that we're asked to engage in. And, and, you know, we don't have to believe it, we don't have to um, accept it at the moment, but we do, we are asked to question it. And we are asked to, for, you know, to ask for help to see things differently from the part of our mind that we are dissociating, um, you know, so that we may begin to, um, to identify more with that part of our mind, let a little bit of that in at a time and, and begin to dispel in the moment as our projections come up, um, our attack thoughts, you know, begin to see how much they're hurting us, how much they're crucifying me um, and how, how, un, um, how mm, very uh, hurtful it is to me to, to, to be harboring these, these thoughts, you know, the heaviness, the weight of that, the darkness of that, how it, how it thrusts me into that solitary confinement wherein I'm that lost child. And do I really want to be there? You know, we begin to see that we do have a choice. And so we sort of back up into the mind without the course is kind of tricky like that. It, it, it kind of, you know, we're like mind, I'm not going there. What is the mind? And, and the course is like, don't worry. You know, Jesus is like, don't worry. Um, you know, just do this practice. And, and so, and, and through this practice as the guilt is undone that the love in the mind is just there, you know? So mm -hmm. it, it begins to heal, it begins to heal us. Yeah, as, as you're sharing that, I was thinking, you know, that's another example of, <laughs> how the course really you know describes itself as as being an indirect curriculum rather than a direct one we don't right. go straight back to perfect oneness we we go through sameness and we get to sameness by listening to the gentle counsel of our inner kindness teacher aka holy spirit that that you know, maybe I could look at those attack thoughts and see that they're all the same even if it's just the slightest uh, upsetting thought from you know, from a hangnail to a holocaust is kind of the range I often use as a right. metaphor because, you know, any, anything that disturbs our peace of mind, no matter how seemingly slight or, or you, know, you know, seemingly horrific, uh, really is uh, a crucifixion thought that we're, we're needlessly inflicting on ourselves and indirectly because minds are joined on, on everyone else, although no damage has ever been done in truth but but that's not how we see things so we need to right. kind of bring back the projections with holy spirit's help you know re reframe our identity to include everyone and and that that right there you know provides a 
the a foundation for true compassion and kindness because then it's like well why would i you know lash out at anyone else if i'm really just lashing out at myself and then again with holy spirit's help we need to see kind of like going from lesson five to lesson 34 if i'm i'm not upset for the reason i think and um i could see peace instead of this if if we look at the the, the premise the, the you know the assumptions and the foundations of the ego's thought system which is that you know we shattered perfect oneness if we if with holy spirit through holy spirit's help see that that's that's a totally untenable position and a flawed concept then you know the the illogic of that comes to mind and and we realize well uh, there's no reason it's 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 a needless sacrifice a needless suffering right. a needless crucifixion that i'm inflicting on myself and i'm i'm depriving the resurrection uh not only to everyone else but to myself as well by by needlessly um harboring the attack thoughts that, that maintain right. a crucified mind yeah. right and yeah. and you know the more we practice this the more we have an experience mm -hmm. of it in our in our relationships a shift of some kind in which mm -hmm. um you know we we just once our ego is out of the way the defensiveness that that was was blocking us from, from really seeing the other person um for you know struggling just like we are and and was it it, it will shift that at some point from from my perception um from my interpretation and i'll have an experience of, of shared interest in some way there will be something that's meaningful to me that that shifts in that and um, and you know may not it, it may not happen for a while in, in our relationships that we've invested our special relationships that we've invested a lot of guilt in you know we may have moments of that and then we go right back into the into the battleground again but um, but we do have these shifts and and that shows us that you know in the in those those moments where there where our defensiveness go is just drops then um, then we have you know we're relating to others. And ourself, really outside the world, <laughs> from from you know above the battleground, we really are coming from that healed perception, and it completely changes the interaction. And um, you know, again, from my perceptive my perception, it doesn't really matter if the other person is still agitated or um, seems attacking or whatever. It you know we're we're just coming from a kind place. And one of the things that Ken Wapnick used to emphasize a lot, especially in the last couple of years of his life was um, the idea of making it about them. And I really, I've been thinking about that as I've been looking at these passages um, for this week's class. And, and I think that it's really so helpful and um, you know something that practical that you can try to remember um, that does help you shift the, uh, you know, the interaction, help you, helps you remember, again, that we're all, you know, that sameness, that we're all fighting the same hard battle. And, um, and if you can sort of set your intention when you're in, in a relationship, I mean, that really is, is the same as, um, as, you know, putting the Holy Spirit or Jesus in charge. It really means that you're setting your intention as, as a healing of our mind. This is a classroom of forgiveness, this, this interaction. And if you kind of go into it with that at the forefront of your mind and kind of remind yourself of it as, as you feel yourself your unkind thoughts arising, um, th then you know it, it can really it can really help you shift that. I think, and um, I, I'm going to give an, a silly example of it. But um, I spent the last two days trying to deal with my phone, <laughs> um, which was dying, and I had to go to the Apple Store and get another iPhone. Which you know we're still in a um, COVID restrictions and pandemic. Um, situation. I had to go to the mall, which was, you know, sort of, I mean, I, I've hardly even been in grocery stores and, you know, here I was in a mall. Um, and, and so, um, and I, you know, make an appointment and, and, and there's, and there, they weren't really helping me with um, any of the transferring of data or, you know, the things, and I, I'm not a techie person at all, but anyway, so that kind of didn't go so well yesterday. And basically I, I had to do, end up trying to do everything on my own. And I, I, when I was, working with transferring data from, you know, from my old phone to my new and setting up my new phone, I kind of reached a point where I didn't know how to remove the SIM card and the, um, you know, the, how to make this, how to take it any further in the installation. 
So I had to call customer support and I got on the phone with a woman who maybe it was like her first day working for Apple or something <laughs> because she really did not know like more than I did. And so we ended up kind of going through this and, and you know, I, I, I was aware almost immediately of my wish to, you know, like what is happening here? Could I speak with, you know, I was having these thoughts of, could I, would you put your manager on, you know, because I was kind of like saying, you know, I'm not very techie and I've taken it as far as I can go. And she's like, I can relate. I don't know what that is either. And, you know, <laughs> not so, the words you wanted to hear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But anyway, but, but what, what <laughs> happened was kind of, uh, uh, the reason I'm using it as an example is it's kind of a funny one, mm -hmm. but it also, um, it, you know, I had this experience of kind of just, we were kind of helping each other mm -hmm. and I kind of lost sight of my own um, need to get this done. And it was more about, mm -hmm. you know, I was feeling some, some empathy for her being in a right. new position. Right. Right. And, um, and then, and it just ended up being this sort of, you know, fine experience. Um, and, you know, we, we figured it out together. <laughs> we got through it. I did set up my phone. Um, you know, I didn't have to, to become stern with her in any way. Um, and so it, 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 you know, that's sort of an example of the way things in, in the, you know, when, when our needs, our ego is out of the way, um, then, then we have a possibility of having a whole different experience. And, um, you know, yeah, I, did, I, mean, I, I wasted about three hours, but I probably would have wasted three hours trying to do it on my own too. So did it really matter? You know, I had, what, what, I, what I learned from it was much, much greater. And if we take the attitude that our lives, you know, the real overriding purpose of all these things that we have to do in our lives, and God knows there's a lot of them to just kind of keep things going. Um, not to mention our, you know, the interactions with our loved ones and who are not always the most loving, you know, and, and our, our, um, all of the, and, and our aging bodies and, you know, our cars and all the difficult, our bosses and our clients and, um, and, you know, all of all that we have to do. And so, you know, if we can take that idea that, you know, I'm really trying to learn um, something different here. I'm really trying to to heal my mind. That is really the intent of of my my life, and none of the rest of it really has any meaning whatsoever. And so um, it 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 does change. It it can totally change the the tenor of of how we're um, you know of the quality of our experience in our lives. And and the irony is that when we <laughs> sh shift into that making it about others and and, and the reframe you know, for, of our little self now includes others, whether it's a seemingly inanimate object like a toaster or a phone or a, or right. a shoelace or, or, you know, a house or what, you know, a planet or whatever, or, or all, the, all the, the alleged others that seem to populate our lives. In those moments, um, you know, we, we're shifted into a place where we can afford to be kind. And, and like you say, then, then making it about the other person, like Ken always said, uh, you know, really becomes a fun thing and it becomes a, a, a joyous thing where, where again, ironically, that's when we really actually can be the most present and lucid and helpful yeah. on the right. even on the level of form many times. Right. Whereas, listen, whereas if we're pre preoccupied with what's, right. what's in it for me, well, we're, we're going to be blinded. For my needs first, it, it, it right. really is, you know, <laughs> Not only does it not work, but but it, it really it, it hurts us. You know, yeah, it, it doesn't yeah. serve us. It, and so, yeah, it's a thorns instead of lilies experience yeah. to get back to our, our yes, chosen exactly, exactly. section. Yeah, and maybe we should read some of. Some yeah, of yeah, we, um, yeah. But uh, that's a great example. I think your story fits really. Yeah, nicely. and yeah. I mean, it, it, of course, you know, same thing in our relationships. Same thing yeah. in our difficult, the ones we love to hate, mm -hmm. who you know always give us a hard time. We know how hard it is to do that. But by practicing all the time and all of the things that come up, all of our interactions, you know, we, we get more and more willing to practice with the ones that are really hard for us. And, you know, everybody has their own um, hierarchy of, of, <laughs> of hate yeah. and, and obstacles to peace, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and, you know, which are illusions. But, um, but, you know, we, we, we know that even in those relationships, we can have those shifts yeah. and um, it's just all about practicing. It so. is. You, 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 you've mentioned the phrase obstacles of peace. And I was reminded having, you know, gone through once and then 
and a half again with uh, um, Lynn Johnson on Saturday mornings. I'm, I'm reading Ken Wapnick's brilliant uh, The Journey Home, The Obstacles mm -hmm. to Peace and the Course in Miracles, which is all about chapter 19, which is if you just right before this, just right before the beginning of this chapter. So it's, just, it's sort of like a good reminder that, you know, in order to have a vision of holiness, we need to go through the obstacles to peace with the Holy Spirit right. to get to that place in our mind where we can see uh, a vision of lilies instead of thorns in every right. interaction and, and, and you know it's it's not coincidental that it ends with the obstacles to peace in chapter 19 and with the lifting of the veil yeah which is all about um you know how we go home together or not at all and mm -hmm. it, it really describes our hesitancy to include everyone in this and um and yet that's really you know it's the generalizing of of this to everyone and everything mm -hmm. And that, and which really means um, becoming very sensitive and um, paying attention to everyone that I'm ex excluding from this. You know, the one again. You know, this is the healing of my mind. This is my call for love, and really, you know, challenging those those exclusions that we're making to this, and and the ones that we're calling unlovable, calling unforgivable. You know, this is a, a practice in really seeing those obstacles. And and um, as, you know, really questioning the, the cause of that, where it's really coming from, because it always means that I, it's 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 always an outpicturing of my condemnation and crucifixion of myself first. Right. So you know, do I want to keep doing it? Right. No one else out there, huh? <laughs> right, right. So all right, so what, let's just read a couple of paragraphs. Of yeah, this. yeah. We'll give the. You want to start? With sure, this? sure. Uh, this chapter 20 in, in the text of A Course in Miracles, The Vision of Holiness, the first section being Holy Week. This is Palm Sunday, the celebration of victory and the acceptance of the truth. Let us not spend this Holy Week brooding on the crucifixion of God's Son, but happily in the celebration of his release. For Easter is the sign of peace, not pain. A slain Christ has no meaning. But a risen Christ becomes the symbol of the Son of God's forgiveness on himself, the sign he looks upon himself as healed and whole. So that healing and wholeness obviously has to do with seeing another's interest as, as our own. You know, the, it's the, the same as ours. The shared making, interest. making about the other person, right? Right. The shared interest of awakening from this dream of vulnerable bodies and and punishment justified sin real right yeah exactly yep. 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 that's and that's the the one goal the one shared purpose that really we right. all have in common that that takes us out of the dream state yeah right i mean a risen christ is really the you know a way of talking about the atonement principle that the separation never happened you know there was there was no crucifixion um, or happily wrong that, that of God or yeah or, the separation or, didn't happen yeah that's right yeah okay so this week begins with palms and ends with lilies the white and holy sign the son of God is innocent and lilies in, in the course is that symbol of of forgiveness really um, and innocence let no dark sign of crucifixion inter intervene between the journey and its purpose between the acceptance of the truth and its expression. This week we celebrate life, not death, and we honor the perfect purity of the Son of God and not his sins. Offer your brother the gift of lilies, not the crown of thorns, the gift of love and not the gift, in quotes, of fear. You stand beside your brother's thorns, brother, thorns in one hand and lilies in the other, uncertain which to give. Join now with me and throw away the thorns, offering the lilies to replace them. This Easter, I would have the gift of lilies of your forgiveness offered to you, to me, and returned by me to you. We cannot be united in crucifixion and death, nor can the resurrection be united in crucifixion and death. I'm sorry, nor can the resurrection be complete till your forgiveness rests on Christ along with mine, right? And the forgiveness of all lost minds, really. Exactly. And, and on a practical note, if you are pulling out blackberries, um, put those on the bottom of the green waste bin so that when you put other stuff on top and try to <laughs> stomp it down, you, you, you won't get to get all the, the thorns going. So 
Right. And, yeah. and, and yeah. <laughs> Having speaking from, from recent practical experience. <laughs> Yes, and offer the you know the the offer your brother the gift of um, of lilies, not thorns, right? Mm -hmm. um, because and and you know and we stand that you know between the two, I'm sure, and you know that really is the decision making mind, right? That is is trying you know is split and is trying to you know is so invested in the ego thought system, mm -hmm. and you know still believes that that somehow. Um, our salvation lies in running away from God and running away from, from unity and running away from sameness and, and you know, my autonomy um, as a personal self against the world. Right? And being right. And being right. <laughs> That's a, being yeah. right is a thorny position. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> According yeah. to the course. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And not seeing the sameness, being angry, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thinking that it's justified um, because it's, it's in, you know, the guilt is in you, not me. And, you know, when in truth, there's no, no one's guilty. There's no cause for any, any of this um, acting out that we're doing, yeah. um, you know, from the smallest twinge of annoyance to all of the horrific, um, violent kinds of things that we're witnessing. Yeah. And, and looking at all those condemnations and, and, and judging thoughts and realizing if, if I can catch those more quickly each time they come up and say, I could see peace instead of this. I, I could, I could give lilies. I could share with myself and indirectly because minds are joined with everyone else in the cosmos, uh, the, the softness and the gentleness and the patience and right. the, 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 the truly peaceful um, state of mind that comes from listening to that inner kindness teacher, then I'm going to have a, a better experience. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm saving yeah, myself yeah. from, you know, we've, I mean, especially when we've been at this for a while, mm -hmm. um, you know, we should be beginning to make the connection Yeah. <laughs> that going that direction is, is not going to bring me peace. Sometimes we do it anyway. That way lies um, madness, right? <laughs> right, right. But even if we decided to do it anyway, and, you know, if we can just remember that, you know, this way lies madness. Um, this is, this is, you know, I'm, I'm hurting myself again and take responsibility for it, not judge ourselves, recognize that it's coming from fear and just, um, but, but own it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That ownership is so crucial because without yeah. ownership, then, then there's still a, a, a scapegoat involved. And then we're forgetting that we're, we're our own complicity and, and the fact that we have the, the, the choice to choose against the insanity and that option is ours, not someone else's. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That part, I think, is um, just so crucial, yeah. you know, and, and we have to, um, you know, if we can just raise to doubt the, the belief that we're right that about our brother, you know, the, the, about our um, projection, our hate thoughts about our brother, our, our, you know, the guilt we see in them, that's really opens the door mm -hmm. to, to the, what's already there, the truth. And so the, the darkness really can't survive that long. Um, with the door open to the light, it just it 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 won't prevail, and and we're learning I think through this practice the more the more we practice, and and you know on this journey home, um, we're learning that um, you know it it doesn't really have the, my my projections don't really have the power my choice for the ego doesn't really have the power that I'm giving it so we're so we're a little more patient with ourselves we're a little less judging of ourselves, and that's that's what healing is. Yeah. And it feels better. It feels <laughs> when, a lot better. When we, we drop those right. those armaments. Yeah. And not it's not a it's not, you know, usually a blissed out kind of thing. It's no, just it's no. just a, a it's just a calmness <sighs> and a relief and a patience that comes. Um and, and the you know, the less we're attacking ourselves in the process, the less we're attacking others. And um, you know, we just it, it just begins to soften. The journey feels a little bit. Um, less rough. It doesn't mean that when we're choosing the ego and really digging our heels in, that we're we're not having a rocky time because yeah. we will. Yeah. But um, but we you know we spend less less and less time doing that. I think. Yeah, exactly. Shortening shortening yeah. that gap of of noticing the discomfort and the lack of peace, and to yeah. saying, well, I could actually choose the thought system of kindness <laughs> and, exactly. and inclusion. Yeah. Exactly. Should I read another paragraph? I actually was thinking that we might read um, the. I'm just very drawn to reading the the a couple of paragraphs from the end of the um, lifting of the veil. 
Oh, okay, sure, sure. So, um, because I think that that it really fits really well with this section. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to just read um, paragraph 19. Okay. And maybe we'll we'll just read to the end of it. From sure. There, okay? okay. Sounds good. So together. Or you can read it if you want. Okay, sure. Yeah. Together we will disappear into the presence beyond the veil, not to be lost, but found, not to be seen, but known. And knowing nothing in the plan God has established for salvation will be left undone. This is the journey's purpose, without which is the journey meaningless. Here is the peace of God given to you eternally by him. Here is the rest and quiet that you seek the reason for the journey from its beginning. Heaven is the gift you owe your brother, the debt of gratitude you offer to the Son of God, and thanks for what he is and what his Father created him to be. And that's kind of like when we kind of use the Holy Spirit's vision to laser through, you know, the facade of form and see right. the, the innocence that we all share, not, not the selective right. innocence that the ego would try to wrest from from a, a limited scarcity thing where, where it's really guilt, but we try to pull what little innocence we can from the wreckage of the guilt that we thought we made. <laughs> right, not to be seen, but no, not to be seen, you know, seen as a personal um, self apart from God and ego, mm -hmm. but but known as, as you know, sharing the same purpose mm -hmm. as, as trying to find our way home together. Right, as yeah. you know, in need of healing, my mind. We we all are in need of that same healing of and learning that we're wrong about ourselves, learning that we are worthy of love, that we are worthy of, of going home. Right. I'm just going to read the last paragraph because I think it's a great closing for sure. today, and we're about at that time. Uh -huh. So, you came this far because the journey was your choice, and no one undertakes to do what he believes is meaningless. What you had faith in still is faithful and watches over you in faith, so gentle yet so strong that it would lift you far beyond the veil and place the Son of God safely within the sure protection of his Father. Here is the only purpose that gives this world and the long journey through this world whatever meaning lies in them. Beyond this, they are meaningless. You and your brothers stand together. Still without conviction, they have a purpose. Yet it is given you to see this perfect purpose in your holy friend and recognize it as your own. So to see it in, in Jesus, Holy Spirit, and to recognize it, it's it's my purpose and and the one you know in front of me, whoever I'm in relationship at the time, that whether we we share the purpose of the same purposes as bodies is is irrelevant. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. We're we're all in it to wake up in truth right. no matter what appearances might tell us right yeah so yeah very helpful, very oh, helpful. Good. Yeah. yeah it's a good thing to remember this week it, it i was going to say this has been a rough week but aren't they all <laughs> in the dream <laughs> anything with the wrong teacher at oh the helm goodness. is a rough in week form, <laughs> and if we're just if we're invested in bodies and just looking at form yep. they're all very rough weeks pretty so. rough yeah exactly yeah. well yeah, once again, Susan, thanks for, for sharing another another session of Thank conversation you. about the course with me. And uh, I'll post this on um, your website, foraceandforgiveness.com, which I always recommend people check out. And uh, also on acimblog.com as well. So uh, until we have our next conversation, have a peaceful week and beyond. So. And happy Easter. Likewise. Likewise. <laughs> Take care. Thanks. <laughs>